Hello and welcome to CIO Leadership Live New Zealand. I'm Cathy O'Sullivan, Editor-in-Chief in APAC for Foundries Enterprise Bands, CIO and CSO. And my guest today is Nicole Ravishankar, the Chief Digital Officer at Air New Zealand. Kia ora, Nicole. Happy New Year. How are you doing today? Hello, Cathy. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I'm going well, thank you. Oh, good, good. Pleasure to be chatting to you today and learning more about um, your career and uh, what you're getting up to at Air New Zealand. So let's kick it off there. How did you get your start in IT? And, you know, what's been your career path into the Chief Digital Officer role at Air New Zealand? Maybe my story is a little um, less exciting than maybe some of the ones uh, people might have heard on the podcast, but I actually uh, did start um, my uh, my career. I mean, I studied what I'm doing at the moment. So I'm a computer science and information systems graduate from the University of Auckland. Um, the, the the interesting thing is, that, and this is how much of a nerd family I belong to, uh, doing computer science was me rebelling against being an engineer, I think, because the rest of them are all engineers. So, um, and, and I had an interest in computers from a very young age. Um, I had a chance to study programming at school in India and my um, my mum encouraged me to sort of take up programming at a very early age. So... I had an interest for it. I studied it. Um, my first job at a university uh, was, well, during uh, my honours year, I was teaching. I was a tutor in, in the department and then stayed back as a re research assistant. And while I was doing that, me and two colleagues, we um, decided we'd set up a startup. And this was in sort of the late 90s. Um, and our startup was, we were very excited about it because we grew up with the internet. And we could see the possibilities. We understood Moore's law to an extent. Uh, and we thought, you know what? People are going to watch TV on their mobile phone. So we'll build a mobile TV app business on 2G networks and on feature phones way before the iPhone. Um, and then we went out, tried to raise some money. Um, and people would tell us no one would ever watch TV on your mobile phones. You guys are crazy. And kick us out. Uh, we persisted. Um, and... Uh, Spark or Telecom New Zealand at the time were looking for a hero app on their new WCDMA network. And that's really what got me introduced to large enterprise. It was through my startup. Um, and the startup, unfortunately, didn't go anywhere. We learned a lot, but it didn't go anywhere. Um, but I did end up with a job at Telecom New Zealand. So that's sort of how my career kickstarted. Excellent. It's it is fascinating coming through the startup route into into enterprise, of course. And Air New Zealand is such a well known brand here. It's it's a household name. You know, it is how the majority of Kiwis get into the country and around the country. But for those who are listening from elsewhere, can you tell us a bit more about the organisation and what you and your team look after? Oh yeah, as you say, Air New Zealand is the national flag flag carrier. Um, you know, in New Zealand, for about a decade or so, it's been the most loved brand. Um, and it's it's something that everyone who works at the airline, you know, realizes and takes quite seriously, actually. We're, we're very proud of that, but we also sort of carry the burden of that responsibility. It's, as you say, the gateway into the country. And, and for, you know, the, those listeners... We're wondering why so much of an importance for an airline brand in the country. I mean, you know, some of it is, I think, the tyranny of distance. Um, you know, we are far away from everywhere else. And the only way in and out is, you know, by 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 flight. And uh, one of the stats that always fascinates me is if you draw 2000 kilometer radius around Auckland, you don't get to the east coast of Australia. But if you're in Berlin and you draw that same circle, you basically end up covering all of Europe. Um, and United Kingdom. And and so, you know, you sort of get a view of how isolated we are geographically. Um, and so the airline is quite important from a, you know, wider New Zealand perspective. You know, New Zealand, 16% of New Zealand GDP relies on air travel. Um, and to put that in perspective, it's about 4% in the United States. And even in hub, city hubs like Dubai and Singapore, that's, you know, in... 10, 12%. So we we are very, very reliant on air connectivity um, internationally, but also domestically. Um, 
people don't realize New, New Zealand's quite a big country. It's a, quite a long country and we only have 5 million people. Um, and so you never have the business case for high speed rail or, you know, massive roading networks. So in some cases, we are the lifeline service across the country. So, um, so yeah, a lot of people rely on the service that Air New Zealand provides and every Air New Zealander, I think, realizes that. Um, yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's a, fantastic place to be working so tell us more then about your team and how your um you and your team contribute to your mission the mission of the organization and what you look after there sure absolutely look our purpose as an organization is to enrich new zealand by connecting new zealanders to each other and new zealand to the world right and, and so Every Air New Zealander, including those that are in my team, um, are really coming to work every day to sort of fulfill that mission, uh, that purpose. Um, and implicit to that, um, sort of coming to digital, we have this uh, working mission of trying to be become the world's leading digital airline. Uh, and so a lot of my team's focus is on bringing that mission to life. Um, and for us, in this current chapter um, in the airline's journey, the way we've looked to attack that is by saying, you know, um, if really we want to be the world's leading digital airline, then we really need to stop thinking of ourselves as an airline with a fantastic digital department, which is chief digital officer runs, but rather as a, a digital business that happens to be an airline. Um, and we've tried to put our money where our mouth is. Uh, and so, when you say your team's role, um, you know, even the concept of my team now has been redefined um, in the way we look at uh, digital within Air New Zealand. And about 95% of my team don't necessarily directly work for me anymore. Um, so about two years ago, we decided, uh, 18 months ago, we decided to rewire the airline where digital gets fully embedded into every nook and cranny of the airline. And so um, the concept of my team is a very interesting con you know, concept in that operating model. But yeah, our, our mission is to build the world's leading digital airline and digital in its broadest sense, not just technology, but you know, the experiences we deliver for our customers, the new business models we can put in place, um, the way we the govern the organization, the way we deliver change um, and, and everything in between. So look, it has been a rough few years in the aviation and the broader travel industry. So can you tell us a bit more about, you know, how that has impacted on, on the company, especially in terms of that ambition to be the, the world's leading digital airline? I mean, obviously a lot of, a lot of time has been uh, taken away from that with, with, with the recovery from the pandemic. I mean, 95% of our business came to a grinding halt. Uh, we, you know, at the peak of the pandemic, uh, we were really flying um, to bring New Zealand Kiwis back home. Um, and we were running sort of lifeline cargo services. Um, and and it was a very difficult time for the airline. I mean, it was a very difficult time for the world, obviously. Um, and a lot of our staff were impacted. Um but there is a silver lining to this story in that, you know, when we started to uh, rebuild the business, we all decided that that was the moment that we, you know, we shouldn't waste. Um, not many businesses get a burning platform sort of the, uh, you know, of the magnitude of COVID and its impact uh, at the airline. Um, yeah, so for us, as we have rebuilt the airline, We've said, look, we don't want to build back like the way it used to be. Can we can we build the airline back um, in a way that uh, really, you know, focuses on three outcomes? Number one is, you know, we want to be, uh, we want to continue to be, uh, uh, you know, an airline that our customers love, um, but we want to be in the sort of top three airlines in the world when it comes to customer satisfaction. Um, not just you know best in the region or or whatever it might be. We have a global ambition from that standpoint. Um, we want to be you know in the top quartile of uh, of best places to work in the region, uh, so we can attract our top talent uh, and and make it a place that they want to 
working and 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 we're also uh, ensuring that we deliver fantastic returns for our shareholders and and an airline business is a typically tends to be a boom and bust business and we want to be able to sort of ride those waves in a very sustainable way financially uh, and from a shareholder return perspective so that's what we're busy focused on in terms of rebuilding the airline and and what that's meant is from a digital standpoint the rebuild is very much focused on what we st- call the, the strategic pillar that we have, we call it digital dexterity. So that's sort of the, the focus of, of the rebuild. And, and really in a nutshell, um, you know, we are starting to look to utilize our digital assets, not just to support the airline and our customers on a sunny day when everything is working right, but really building the airline's digital asset uh, by taking into account the fact that we live in a Barney world, right? Um, so, we, you know, your listeners might have heard of VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, change, ambiguity. We think it, we've gone beyond VUCA into a world where, you know, that is brittle. You know, there's a lot of anxiety. The trends that we're dealing with at the moment are nonlinear and not everything is comprehensible. So it's, in, you know, incomprehensible. So architecting for that is part of the rebuild has really been the uh, focus of what we've been up to. And of course, you know, with that lofty ambition to be the world's, dig- you know, leading digital airline and all you want to do there in terms of, um, you know, excellent customer service and all of the things you've mentioned, how do you balance that then with, you know, that importance of just maintaining existing IT infrastructure and, you know, lots of legacy systems that still keep things ticking along? How do you balance that need for that cutting edge technology and the ambitious goals you have with the just day-to-day managing old IT stacks? Yeah, look, that's a great question. Um, uh, I got to bring back Accenture to New Zealand um, in sort of 2013-14. Uh, and as part of, uh, I used to work at Accenture and, and I was the managing partner for New Zealand for a bit. And and as part of bringing uh, Accenture back, I did a bunch of work around, uh, pu- you know, publishing a few uh, thought pieces. I might have even written an article actually in the CIO magazine. Uh, it was called Two Speed IT, which was all the rage back then, I suppose. Um, and, you know, the advice I'd given to sort of CIOs then was, um, you know, the two speed IT narrative, which is, you know, you got to sort of modernize, keep the lights on, modernize the legacy IT stack while you independently by exposing some of the core functionality, you, you, you know, you, you, take access to and and leverage sort of the digital revolution that was underway. Uh, soon after that, I, I got the opportunity to be the CDO of Vector New Zealand, uh, the uh, energy company here in, here in NZ. And I put my own advice to test. And I quickly realized actually that playbook was great in theory, but really, really problematic in, in practice because one of the unintended consequences of that was it created a cultural divide between the folk whose job was to keep the lights on on very important legacy technology and the cool kids who got to play with all the cutting edge new stuff. Um, And I think it is very true, the statement, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Um, and, And I very quickly was compelled to sort of almost write a correction of errors note and saying, you know, actually, um, it sounds great, but it's hard to to put in practice. Um, And so, yeah, every CIO, I think, uh, at least of a large enterprise that's been around for a while, and in our case, we're an 82-year-old airline, grapples with that question. That's sort of the crux problem of our role or one of the crux problems of our role. Um, And I think the... um, the answer is also fairly nuanced and it's quite, you know, contextual. In our case, um, when we looked at solving this problem uh, about two and a half years ago, and we have our fair share of legacy technology here, um, we decided the way we would approach it is not by necessarily just focusing on the technology itself, but taking a step back and going, what would the operating model of the entire airline need to look like to help 
address that challenge, to ensure we can take that challenge on head on. Um, and the answer we got to is we can't, we no longer can be an airline with a digital department. You know, it can't be the CDO's responsibility to modernize legacy technology and, you know, bring cutting edge technology to the airline where the rest of my colleagues are focused on running the airline. Um, we needed to acknowledge that we were a digital business and it, it needed to become a shared problem. And, and that's what we've done. Um, so digital now is not just mine, but the entire leadership squad's responsibility. Um, and included in that is, you know, all of the trappings of needing to modernize legacy technology alongside taking advantage of not just now digital tech or that second generation of technology that we've had to play with, but the, you know, rapidly maturing third generation of exponential technology, AI and and, and the such. Um, so, so we are now playing a team sport, and that's been actually quite an incredible shift for us, um, where it doesn't matter if you're the chief operating officer and their organization or the chief customer officer, um, everyone's involved in modernizing legacy tech, making sure we are running experiments at the other bookend um, and everything in between. So it's fairly nuanced sort of approach, I'd say. Yeah, indeed. And look, you mentioned AI there. And, you know, 2023 was definitely the year of the buzzwords around Gen AI and AI. So can you tell us a bit about your approach uh, within Air New Zealand? Is it is something that you're actively exploring? I know you've got that Oscar chatbot that I often use, but uh, are there any other opportunities that you're, you're looking at? Uh, look, this... Yeah, we can't have a conversation about technology and not talk about Gen AI, obviously. Um, and, you know, large part of the an airline is it's a big optimization business and you're sort of trading off a lot of different um, variables and you're trying to find this sort of sweet spot where you've got the right network and the right schedule and the right people you need to operate and, and making sure that, you know, you price your your fares right and so on. So th there's a lot of use cases across the airline um, where uh, emerging tools like generative AI can play a big role. Um, our general approach to generative AI specifically is being one that simply put is, you know, cautious curiosity. Um, and and we've, we're doing sort of four things on, on that topic within the airline. Um, number one, we are, um, you know, well, I mean, firstly, I, I think what everyone is doing is trying to understand uh, what the technology can and cannot do um, through uh, experimentation. But it's it's sort of falling into sort of four categories here at the airline, right? We've got um, a bunch of work that's underway to build the workbench for AI, not just generative AI, but you know other more advanced um, uh, AI techniques, cognitive, you know, advanced data science, or generative AI. So this sort of capability that we can use that underpins everything that we're doing. And then there are use cases that are falling into three categories. There is there's work underway. We're working with Microsoft on the Copilot co trial where there, there, there is capability that's emerging that are embedded in the toolkit itself. Um, and and we're taking advantage of that. So we have 300 Air New Zealanders currently using Copilot. Uh, we're starting to do Copilot for our developers, uh, you know, the GitHub Copilot trial, et cetera. Um, and that's much more of the commoditized Gen AI, and there's a bunch of work there. We then have some very proprietary use cases We've identified about 140 use cases across each one of our domains. Um, and we're running initial experiments across about eight of them, and we're slowly expanding. So in Q3, we're expecting to run about 50 of these experiments. Um, and then AI more broadly, um, we see playing a role in these big transformative ideas. And on that end of the spectrum, uh, we're starting to think of Air New Zealand as a bit of a Petri dish for innovation where we can solve some big long-standing challenges in the airline industry here in New Zealand and at Air New Zealand very quickly. And if we can solve those problems right and we can productize them right, then we think we can then take it around the world and others will be interested. 
Um, you know, we always talk about New Zealand as a great place for experimentation. It's, you know, it can be a fantastic petri dish. This is our attempt at putting our money where our mouth is and making sure that, you know, we sol solve some some of those. I mean, a couple of those sort of ideas, um, as I said, you know, an airline is a big optimization problem. Um, but each individual department in the airline optimizes within its own area so for example we have a fleet team that decide which aircraft to buy you know their their optimization is around you know what sort of aircraft should we be buying based on the network that we have and we have a scheduling team that works out where to fly and how often you know we have a crewing team how many pilots and cabin crew do we need engineering and maintenance and etc in this new way of working we've now got a big integrated planning function so rather than sequentially planning, which used to take six to 12 months, we're trying to create these fully rotated schedules very quickly. There are no tools in the marketplace for that, but AI can play a massive role in trying to build a fully rotated schedule very, very quickly. Um, and so that's one of those ideas that we're playing with to say, can we utilize AI to, to develop that? And that's one of the, you know, challenges that every airline around the world faces. So you know, it, it'll be an interesting challenge to sort of take on and see where we get to. Indeed. And look, another challenge, I guess, facing um, the airline industry and, and more broadly, um, most large companies is, is sustainability. So can you tell us about, you know, how your digital strategy supports the, the airline sustainability goals? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a big focus for us. Um, the two areas where we think we need to take sort of global leadership um, is uh, around digital and, and sustainability. So we have a program we've launched called Flight NZ Zero. Um, and there are many aspects to that program. And in each of those areas, digital has a role to play. Um, so one of the things we're currently working on is... Um, we are going to have a commercial demonstrator of an electric plane in, in New Zealand flying cargo uh, by 2026. And so we've just put in the order for it. Um, and to bring, um, you know, a, 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 com to commercially launch an aircraft like that, there's a lot of digital work that needs to happen behind the scenes. Um, you know, we need to work out how we interface with air traffic control. We need to know how, you know, that aircraft is maintained and managed uh, in the hangar. How do we, you know, um, ensure we manage weight and balance effectively? So every aspect of aircraft and airline operations are impacted when you, when you bring a new aircraft like that to bear. So a bunch of our folk are focused around introduction of that. And we think that is just the start of um, many such, you know, new propulsion aircraft that start to show up over the next decade and beyond. Um, so this is really our, our chance to start practicing, you know, what an airline of the future could look like. Um, and so there's a lot of work there. Um, we also think New Zealand's the perfect airspace to try out. You know, 60% of our domestic routes are under 300 nautical miles. And so these aircraft can fly long distances. So, you know, over time, does Air New Zealand become, you know, from being sort of, if I, to put it, you know, slightly unsophisticatedly, if we are currently a bus company with wings, you know, is the future of Air New Zealand also a taxi company with wings, right, where we're doing more frequent trips on smaller aircraft um, and your relationship with an airport changes at that time, et cetera. So a lot of that work is underway. Um, we've also got a lot of work underway around what role could digital play in creating customer propositions. Um, so, you know, we are most of our corporate customers' largest scope three emissions. Um, and so a large part of our focus is around providing visibility to our customers, our corporate and enterprise customers to make sure they can make the right decisions around what, you know, what meetings they want to fly to versus what meetings they want to be able to, you know, might choose to take over Zoom, et cetera. Um, and being able to give them that visibility at a very granular level so they can make the right decisions uh, for their organization. We're also looking at introducing a new, uh, introducing sustainability into our loyalty program. Um, and so that's a, uh, a pretty big focus. We've seen airlines around the world introduce a new loyalty tier, a green loyalty tier. We think 
that's not enough. That's not going far enough. And we think it should be part of every tier of our loyalty program. So uh, a, a bunch of our folk are busy designing what that could look like. Um, yeah, so it's a busy place as far as sustainability is concerned. And within core infrastructure itself, you know, just reducing our own carbon footprint as a technology team, uh, you know, everyone, you know, there's no secret here, but um, there's a lot of value in looking at migration to the cloud as a means of reducing our own carbon footprint, you know, what devices we use and how we use it. Um, we recently launched a platform called um, Flight Keys and, and Avio Book. Um, and our jet fleet today, we, we run a jet fleet and a turboprop fleet, you know, with the propeller planes. Um, our jet fleets today have shifted to a completely paperless flight deck. So over a course of a year, um, we used to print flight plans that if you stack them one above the other, they're the high length, uh, uh, length of this uh, sky tower. Um, and so there's so much you can do by just digitizing some of these processes where you just take paper out of the process. Um, so, yeah, I mean, lots of our digital agenda overlaps with our sustainability agenda. Good to hear. So um, listen, Nicole, when it comes to um, your role and um, when you're looking at what technology partners um, you you want to um, deal with, you know, what, what does a good partnership look like from your perspective when you're out in the market looking for a technology provider? Great question. Um, look, I think the first place to start is you know, what What do we think the role of a partner is, right? Is it a very um, commoditized sort of um, transactional relationship or is it something greater than that? And what we've realized as an airline is um, for us to achieve what we think we need to achieve, for us to be able to deliver the type of service that our, customer ex our customers expect of us, we can't do it alone. Um, and we need, we need, world-class partners to work with us um, and be as passionate about the purpose of the airline, uh, uh, they, they themselves being as passionate about it as we are. Um, and so I think that alignment of purpose is a big deal for us um, when we're thinking about who we partner with. Um, we are very passionate about New Zealand Inc. Um, so working with partners who are equally as passionate about you know, taking the New Zealand story to the world and what we stand for, um, you know, that that's a pretty critical element. Um, in digital, we're particularly focused around also developing digital talent, not just for the airline, but playing our role in developing digital talent here. Um, so partners who are equally committed to that is, is important. But we also are looking for partners who have, IP and know-how that they've built um, with, you know, through sort of a global perspective. Um, so we want to have that balance of um, local investment, but global IP. And, and you know, I think that's a list any CIO or CDO would, would provide, I, I, I think. Uh, but when you are a large enterprise in New Zealand, um, it is hard to get that mix right. Uh, and so we're constantly looking at making sure, you know, we have the right partner mix. But equally also, you know, we have a role to play to make sure our partners are successful. Um, as I said, I have come from that side of the fence into a in-house role. So I've, I've been on both sides and I know how important it is to have a, 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 a sort of vibrant partnership, which is built on win-win outcomes. Uh, and so we want to also be a good partner for them. And maybe the final point I'd make is because my career started off as a startup that then worked with large business, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of large enterprise trying to collaborate with um, sort of the startup ecosystem. Um, and I think a lot of value is trapped in that space and can be unlocked if the two parties learn to play nicely with each other. Um, so in our portfolio partners, we're always trying to support um a handful of up and coming businesses that are really trying to think about solving these problems in a new novel 
way and bringing this, you know, interesting mindset to bear. Um, and I think we have a role to play there too. So um, that's sort of my view on partnerships. So bringing it back then to internal um, internal staff, and you mentioned earlier at the outset, you know, that your team isn't necessarily your team anymore the way you're, you, you've changed the business model over the years. So can you tell us a bit more about, um, I guess, the strategies that you implement to, to foster that culture of continuous learning, collaboration? You know, how, how do you do that when, when you do have people in many different teams that you're not, not necessarily responsible for or directly report to you anymore? Uh, I- Look, I, 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 the way I describe my role these days is I'm sort of the, the, the leader of the digital crafts for the airline. So, you know, those people who identify as having uh, digital as their primary craft, um, I consider them very much part of my team. And part of my responsibility is to make sure that um, we focus on their craft development in a very, very systematic way. Um, and we also ensure that the airline has ac- access to world-class talent, best practice, the best tooling that's required, et cetera. Um, so um, that's very much still a core part of my accountability. Um, and and But what this, uh, this sort of new way of working, this operating model, um, enterprise agility, if you will, if you want to label it, has allowed us to do is – really clearly demarcate where um, the focus of a people leader is around people development versus where the focus of the peop- of a leader is outcomes delivery. And so we're not mixing drinks there. So when we are focused on development, you know, we have clear plans in place and we're investing in that. Um, so the biggest thing we've done in terms of continuous learning and embedding that culture into the airline is rewiring the airline to adopt this model, not just in digital, but across the board. Um, and so I think if if you were to ask me to summarize our operating model or what is it based on, I think a learning culture is one of the key drivers of why we've moved to this way of working. Um, and so, yeah, continuous learning is, is, is not something we want to do by chance, but by design. Um, so we have a lot of programs in place that, you know, the umbrella term we use here is called digital academy. Um, and that digital academy is has a pillar focused around just uplifting every Air New Zealanders sort of uh, digital capability, so they don't see digital as an intimidating, very technical world that they just need to outsource to someone else and they'll do that for them. That they everyone starts to engage with digital as an, an entire airline, because if we're a digital business that happens to be an airline, then everyone's in digital, right? So a lot of investment in sort of bringing everyone's digital capability up. We run a minors, majors and minors program. Um, and so people who are working as analysts in other parts of the business, but are interested in learning data and analytics, you know, new and and and, and more complex data and analytics techniques, et cetera, we, we give them the opportunity to do so. And then we have very specific craft training for, we have about 13 crafts we have identified within digital and each one of those has, has a very specific um, uh, set of programs that we've got in place. Um, we have reinstated our graduate program, um, and we've also, you know, reinstated programs where we are cross-training people to come across and build a career in digital from other parts of the airline and and the community itself. And one of the things that I'm quite proud of is um, some of the work we're doing with with school. So um, I'm part of a program with the Auckland Blues and the Charitable Trust, where we're running sort of leadership programs um, for year 12, 13 students, and in sometimes year level, level, level students, 11 students. Uh, we we um, delivered that program for about 60, 620 students last year across 31 schools. Um, and the reason I think that's important is because as large businesses, we're in this sort of just-in-time mindset to get access to talent. Uh, but we really need to prime the pump many years in advance to be able to get access to that. And and 
you know, we all as, you know, big business leaders, we have that responsibility, I think. So it's a multi-pronged program for us as far as continuous learning is concerned. And finally, Nico, what's important to you as we head into this new year, 2024, what's in the pipeline in the, in the months ahead? That's a great question. It's a very busy pipeline. Um, uh, it's a full pipeline, but um, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. Uh, but it's in the um, in a climate where there's a lot of headwinds. Um, so as an airline industry, what I've learned now over the last two and a half years is it, it is a boom and bust industry. Um, and we're going into a, you know, this, into a cycle where things are going to be fairly, fairly difficult for the airline. So first and foremost, we need to be able to, you know, deliver what we call safe OTP, safe on-time performance. That's the sort of bread and butter service we provide. Um, and so focus will remain on that. Um, focus is also on, a bunch of transformation programs that are underway across the airline. Um, and some of that, uh, some of those transformations are actually industry collaboration. So we, you know, the whole industry is changing the way airlines retail tickets, which are 30, 40 year old processes that haven't been modernized for a very long time. And any Zealand's taking quite a central role in that. Um, so that's going to be a very exciting part of the agenda. A lot of work at the moment is focused around as Aircraft get smarter. Um, we're spending a lot of time thinking about what's a fit for purpose cybersecurity capability we need to have in the airline and, and what a connected aircraft is going to look like. We've recently announced a partnership with SpaceX Starlink. Uh, we'll be one of a very small cohort of airlines who will launch a Starlink service. We'll trial that over the course of the year. So that's a, that's a big focus for us. Um, and like every other CDO, um, uh, I'll be focused also on 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 what happens and watch closely around what happens with generative AI and and AI more 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 in general. But um, look for us, uh, you know, we want to deliver the best flying experience on earth, right? So the agenda is only meaningful if we continue to be that airline that pushes the boat out on behalf of its customer. So. Um, the filter for me is always customer back. Um, and yeah, as, as circumstances change and new opportunities present themselves, um, you know, we, we will make sure that we'll prioritize what's right for our customers and our staff above all else. Well, I look forward to seeing the fruits of your labor on the money flights I have in the year ahead, both around New Zealand and out of New Zealand. Nikhil Ravishankar, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Kathy. Nice talking to you.